So the good news? After months of trying to line up an interview with the BC Environment Minister, dealing with four different aides, explaining which topics I wanted to cover, discussing several dates, and the late cancellation of a 30-minute interview that was set to happen February 1st, I finally had an interview locked down with George Heyman for 3 p.m. this Thursday. The bad news. The phone call Friday afternoon from his office informed me that the interview was on, but there was just one teeny tiny little thing I couldn't ask about. I tried to guess what topic might be off limits. I could give you all day, and I'm betting you'd come up with a much more entertaining list than I did. I'll also bet you still won't get it right. The answer? That one teeny tiny little thing I couldn't ask the minister about? Policy. <laughs> when I asked a very polite person from the minister's office to clarify this for me, the clarification was clear. No policy questions whatsoever on orcas. Yeah, that's an actual quote. So I could ask the environment minister about absolutely anything as long as it didn't relate to what the BC environment ministry was doing to protect the BC environment. And just to make sure I had no time to go rogue, my 30 minute interview was cut to 20, despite my repeated offer to talk whenever and wherever was convenient for the minister. As much fun as it would be to meet George Heyman, ask if he likes whales, and then spend the rest of our time shooting the breeze about Brock Besser's Rookie of the Year chances, I decided to make like Henrik Sedin and pass. After I went public on Facebook last month about getting an email saying the minister would never ever talk to me, the minister's office contacted me to set this interview. In the thousands of interviews I've done, I can only think of two times. I was ever told any topic was off limits. I was warned not to ask Claire Danes about some super famous dude she was dating who I'd never heard of, and that was only because the publicist was worried she might storm out or burst into tears. You've seen Homeland. And David Copperfield's publicist demanded a full list of questions before they consented to an interview, with the final proviso that under no circumstances could I ask about the magician's relationship with supermodel Claudia Schiffer. Midway through the interview, Copperfield tells me, you can throw out that list and ask anything you want. And then he immediately starts telling me all about Claudia Schiffer. For a bit more context for anyone who thinks the media is more muzzled than it is, when I interviewed Justin Trudeau, guess how many topics I was told to avoid? In my experience, interview subjects dodge questions, ignore questions, or run out the clock to avoid answering questions, but they don't actually forbid them. I'm approaching politicians from Washington State and Radical Thought here plan to ask them about policies, since they're actively dealing with protecting orcas from pipelines, salmon farms, even drones and kayaks. I put in a request to speak to the BC Liberals environment critic about, you know, policy. I'll also try to line up someone for the BC Greens to talk policy. For the last nine months, I've been hosting a podcast series about orcas, oceans, and the environment. Our guests have included the leaders of both the federal and provincial Green Party, eco-icon David Suzuki, and key players in organizations like Sierra BC and EcoJustice. We've got interviews lined up or recorded and ready to roll with environmental experts from around the world. Most of our interviews are filmed for possible use in a documentary we're making about Moby Doll, which is really about the past, present, and future of our southern resident orcas. The podcast started as a way to make sure I could get word out about the orcas and oceans now, because documentaries take a really long time, and the situation with these orcas is urgent. To be clear, there are a few people I'd keep jumping through hoops for. Lining up Jane Goodall took a lot of calls and emails before she had to cancel. And I am still game to jump through flaming hoops to line that up. So Ms. Goodall, if you're out there, you're still at the top of my wish list. <laughs> the BC Environment Minister? I'm maxed. For everyone who tried to make this interview happen, thanks again for all your time and effort. And if any of you want to ask BC's Minister of the Environment why he doesn't want to discuss BC's environment with me, feel free. 
But at this point, I'm only interested in talking to him for a minimum of 45 minutes. And there's only one thing I'll promise not to ask about. Claudia Schiffer. If you'd like to support the Scanna podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or help us out on Patreon. I'd also love your suggestions for who else we should talk to. And while I'd prefer to talk to people in person, Skype is freaking magic, so we can reach out to people from around the world. Please post any ideas for guests below, and if you see a name there that you're excited about, let us know so we can get a sense of who you'd like us to talk to. Thank you. For the Scanna Podcast, I'm Mark Larenyang.